Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my breakdown of the Jack Cruz, Andrew Huberman, Rick Rubin podcast series. This is part five, and today I'm going to be talking about Dr. Robert Beckers and the DC electric current that he found, which is the regeneration and healing current in basically all life and the implications of it and explaining some of the things that were talked about uh, in this podcast with respect to Dr. Becker and the DC electric current. So first, just a bit of background on Dr. Becker. So Dr. Robert Otto Becker was born May 31st, 1923, and died May 14th, 2008. And he was an orthopedic surgeon and researcher in electrophysiology and electromedicine. And he specifically performed pioneering work on regeneration, and he primarily focused on bone regeneration. Um, But we're going to talk about the implications for all tissues and for the entire human body um, that his findings kind of revealed. And so basically, here's the main summary of his finding. He found for the first time that bone does not heal, it regenerates. Now, I'm going to stop right there and explain what that means. So normally, say, you know, when you have a cut on your leg, that tissue, the skin, does not regenerate, it heals. In other words, what does healing really mean? Healing means that the skin does not go back to the original form and original quality that it has instead it forms scar tissue which is not as good as the original tissue but it just you know kind of does the trick regeneration means that the tissue actually goes back to exactly the way it was before in other words you can't tell at all that there was ever even an injury or damage to the tissue in the first place that's the difference between healing and regeneration and so we used to think that bone just healed um, just like you have a scar on your skin if you got cut However, Dr. Becker found that bone does not heal. It actually can regenerate, and it does so via a DC electric current. DC stands for direct current. It does so via a DC electric current, which is created in the nerve that innervates the bone. And um, the DC electric current then travels right under the myelin sheath of the nerve. And then it hits the periosteum of the bone, stimulates the periosteum, and then the red blood cells that are within the injured bone They are then stimulated by the DC electric current that traveled down the nerve, and then the red blood cells actually undergo de-differentiation, effectively turn into stem cells, and then these stem cells are then able to re-differentiate into new healthy bone tissue. So that's actually how the regeneration of bone um, works and occurs, and Dr. Becker is the one that found that. And thus, so what's the implication for all of the other tissues in the body and you know for the human body at large so not every tissue in the human body has the same level of regenerative capacity so for example the liver can regenerate bone as he found can regenerate and actually the very tips of your fingers um primarily when you're young um, can actually regenerate if they get cut off just the very tips and usually just when you're young those are basically the tissues that have full regenerative capacity However, other tissues can heal, for example, you know, the skin and the muscles of the body, etc. And so it appears that the DC electric current is the healing or regeneration signal for basically all tissues in the body. Now, again, different tissues have a different capacity to heal and regenerate, um, you know, bone versus skin, as I explained earlier. But the signal for it all appears to be this DC electric current that travels along the nerve um, as Dr. Becker found. And so this is so important um, because it's basically the healing signal in the human body. And just to tie something in that Dr. Cruz talked about in that podcast and has talked about a lot in his other work is that the reason that non-native EMFs, for example, the non-native EMFs from our phone and from Wi-Fi and as Dr. Becker actually did research in from electric power lines, all of this um, non-native EMF actually affects and disrupts this DC electric healing current. So that is why Dr. Jack Cruz, you know, talks so much about avoiding non-native EMFs as much as you can and um, being out in nature as much as you can away from non-native EMFs because the non-native EMFs actually disrupt this DC electric healing current. And so that's kind of the importance of the DC electric current. And that's also a big reason why Dr. Jack Cruz talks about trying to avoid non-native EMFs as much as possible. Now, so what's interesting is that not only did Dr. Jack Cruz kind of popularize in modern times uh, Dr. Robert Becker's work and the importance of the DC electric uh, healing and regenerative current that he found, but also, so Becker never found the origin 
of the DC electric current. He was never, never able to realize um, what was actually generating and creating the DC electric current that he found. However, what's interesting is that Dr. Jack Cruz went and talked to Dr. Becker, Becker in person and Cruz told Becker that he believed that it was the endogenous light production um, that he's talked about and that I talked about earlier in this series uh, that we are creating internally. That endogenous light production and its interaction with the neuron, he believes is actually creating the DC electric current. And so I don't know the exact rest of the mechanism and details on this. There's basically a couple of ways that this could be happening. So the endogenous light could be um, increasing the inner mitochondrial membrane, uh, the electric current that goes along the inner mitochondrial membrane, and that could be actually increasing the, um, you know, that goes through the neuron potentially, or it could be uh, the endogenous lights interaction with POMC uh, and melanin. So basically the, the mitochondrial biophoton production uh, hitting melanin, which causes the charge separation of water, as I just talked about in the last video, creating free electrons, and then potentially those um, creating the DC electric current um, through a mechanism. Either of those two could be possible or it could be something else that I don't know about. I am not completely sure because Dr. Cruz has never fully elucidated the mechanism that he believes. Hopefully I'll be able to ask him soon about that, about the exact mechanism that he believes is creating the DC electric current that Dr. Becker found in a podcast soon. I hope to have him on soon. But so hopefully that elucidates the importance of uh, Dr. Robert Becker's work and the DC electric healing and regenerative current that he found. And hopefully that helps to explain the reason why it was brought up in this podcast and it's important and just importance and just kind of helps explain the mechanism and helps you gain a better understanding um, of his work and of the DC electric current. Okay, lastly, I just want to say thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, please consider liking, commenting, or subscribing to the channel as that really helps support the channel. And then I just want to say that this video is purely for educational purposes and this is not medical advice. Thanks for watching.